Hello and welcome to another battle report for my blog, War Games Review. This will be a Warhammer Fantasy Battles report. My Bretonian Army versus my brother-in-law's Warriors of Chaos Army, which you've seen before. This is the first 8th edition battle report I've done. The 2250 point level, and this is the Dawn Attack scenario. Now here's the deployment. This is the first battle report I've done for 8th edition probably the third or fourth game I've played in 8th edition. Sorry for the long lull between games. Just an overview here, and I'll go over this in more detail. Just to let you know that for the most part, uh, terrain doesn't really come into play in this game, so if I don't mention something it's because it has no effect on the game. Uh, in the bottom middle part of this picture, there's a roll of electrical tape. Uh, that's playing the part of a magic circle. Uh, and then his unit starting on the left, uh, there's a juggernaut riding hero. There's a block of chaos warriors. In that block of chaos warriors in the bottom left, the unpainted model is his general, which is a level 4 wizard of Zinch. And everything that can take a mark in this game does take a mark of Zinch, uh, except the juggernaut rider who has to take corn. Next to them is a unit of Chaos Marauders. Uh, we do quite a bit of proxying just because we don't have a lot of money to spend on models, so we get by with what we have. Uh, so even though they're Marauders, they look a lot like Chaos Warriors, but yeah, the one on the right is Marauders. Inside that, there's a level 2 wizard. I don't remember which lore he took. Uh, he's on the left, and then the bottom right is a fighty hero. Then there's a regular building, a unit of Chaos Ogres. Uh, you can see the ogres again there. Uh, regular forest, the hell cannon, and then the far right, that's the chaos war shrine. So from my left to my right, um, Pegasus Knights, a uh, block of Knights of the Realm with my battle standard bearer, a uh, block of Knights of the Realm with my general. The general's in the front middle there, kind of the shiny model on a green horse. Uh, he's kitted out for the... Uh, Reroll hits, reroll wounds, and always has weapon skill 10 abilities. Uh, I know a lot of my models are kind of disheveled and without riders. Kind of looks like the Rainbow Brigade here. I've been doing a lot of testing on different spray paint methods and dip methods and things like that, so uh, it'll come together someday. Just hang in there. Then there's a unit of questing knights, and their job is to protect the level 4 prophetess that's in there. She's kind of the purple. Sorry about this blurry picture. Um, then a block of men-at-arms with a level 1 damsel in them. Right behind the men-at-arms is a level 1 damsel mounted. And all three of my damsels have taken lore of life. Uh, the idea is I want my prophetess to have throne of vines and flesh to stone. So I roll for my level 1s first to make sure you know I have a better chance of getting those spells I want. And in this game I did get the spells I wanted to, but... Uh, you'll see whether or not that comes into play later. And then on the far right of this picture is Knights Errant. And then way out on the right extreme is my Trebuchet. Uh, I had to put it way out there because of the Dawn Attack scenario. Likewise, my opponent had to put the uh, Hell Cannon and the War Shrine out on his far flank because of the Dawn Attack scenario. That building is a Bretonian Chapel, but that doesn't ever come into play. So, uh, Bretonians pray, and that means the other side goes first. Now, in this scenario, the way I understand it is as Bretonia, if you set up first, you still have to decide if you want to give up your right to uh, also go first, and I did. So, in essence, what that means is I set up first, and my opponent got to go first, but I think that's probably right in game's terms. Very little movement here by Warriors of Chaos in the first turn. Right off the bat, his level 4 casts the Infernal Gateway spell. That spell targets this unit here, the Knights of the Realm, plus the Battle Standard Bear. And this is one of those spells that if you roll an 11 or a 12 for the strength, the whole unit is automatically destroyed. No armor saves, no ward saves. And very first thing in the game, I have lost my BSB and the largest unit. So that was kind of a setback. 
By the way, I'm testing out some of the features in my newer version of PowerPoint, so I hope you like all the uh, corny little effects I've put in. This is a picture just to show him, you know, not moving very much, just shuffling around ever so slightly. The only unit that's really aggressively coming forward at all is the ogres. Uh, the war shrine's moving up a little. All right, so Bretonian turn one. Uh, the Pegasus Knights did vanguard, by the way, and they started further on the left after the vanguard. Now they're moving over closer to that uh, magic circle to take advantage of the magic resistance if he casts. I don't think his guys will charge me. I think at this point they would have to roll like a 10, 11, or 12 to make the charge, uh, so I'm not too concerned about that. Just kind of repositioning things there. Mostly just hanging back, although I am pushing my um, men at arms up. Uh, the thought process is with uh, all the damsels, I can get some buffs on them. I moved my mounted level one into the Knights Errant there, and they're in a position where um, they can counter charge if my men at arms get charged by the ogres. So, uh, in an attempt to get revenge on his wizard killing my best unit, I manage to trebuchet them, but it scatters off and only kills two. So, <laughs> after the whole first turn of the game, I've lost an entire unit in my BSB. He's lost two marauders on foot. So, yeah, I'm kind of thinking this isn't going very well so far. Here's an overview at the end of turn one, just what things look like overall. All right, turn two starts with uh, the ogres charging my men-at-arms. Um, you'll notice one of the quote-unquote ogres in the back row is actually the old greater demon of Zinch model turned around backwards. That's just because he was in the front. He wouldn't fit. There are six ogres there. Uh, we just had only four kind of roughly right-sized models to pretend to be ogres. And then uh, here's just a different view of what it looks like on the other side of the table. And in this picture, he had m tried to cast a spell, but uh, the magic resistance for the magic circle actually saved the Pegasus Knights, because they were close enough for that. Magic resistance. Sorry, couldn't resist. In the battle in the middle, the Men at Arms did pretty well. Uh, the Damsel, unfortunately, did die, and four rank and file guys, but they rolled Snake Eyes and held. All right, beginning of Bretonian turn two. Uh, again, not a lot happening. The Pegasus Knights flew up and behind the Men at Arms, <laughs> not the Men at Arms, up and behind the Chaos Warriors, and uh, the Knights Errants, uh, as expected, countercharged the Ogres. And in the main event, uh, this time the ogres rolled much, much better than before. I tried to get some buffs off. I think every single buff was dispelled, although I may have gotten the spell with a 5-6 regeneration off on the uh, Knight's Errant, but obviously he aimed everything at the men-at-arms. Uh, so yeah, my whole strategy about using Throne of Vines in conjunction with Flesh to Stone did not work. Uh, so all those guys down at the bottom, that standing row, plus some extra guys, all died. Um, here's one thing I'm not sure exactly how it works. Um, I know with the steadfast rule you have to use unmodified leadership or the general's leadership. I'm pretty sure I read online that you cannot use inspiring presence's rule uh, for uh, steadfast because my men-at-arms rolled seven, which using their own leadership is a failure because it's six on a steadfast with their yeoman, but those questing knights nearby would have provided eight. So I'm pretty sure they failed, but if somebody knows differently, please tell me. And then rolling uh, for the knights, uh, all they needed was a seven or less, and they rolled a nine, so both of them failed. Both got run down. Um, yeah, so that was great. And by the way, this was uh, in my turn, so coming up next is Warriors of Chaos turn three. Now, before we go to Warriors of Chaos turn three, I put that green arrow in there because I want you to look at where those marauders are standing. We pre-measured, 
And in order for them to make a charge from this position, they would have to roll box cars. They would have to roll exactly 12. My opponent thought to himself, well, I want to move them forward anyway, so I might as well try it. So, of course, knowing my luck, the very first move of Warriors Kiss turn 3 is he tries to make the charge, tries to roll 12, and he does. So my questing knights get charged by a ranked up block of marauders, which is just wonderful. This game's going great for me so far. Uh, over here you can see just some repositioning going on. Uh, he turned around his juggernaut rider to face my pegasus knights. 